What's up guys, Jordan here. And if you're wondering how you can speed up the time it takes to open up files, free up hard drive space, make sure your hard drive is in good working order, securely erase files at government standards and set up most of these features and many more to run automatically, then this video is for you. To do all this, we'll be using Drive Genius 3, which is essentially disutility on steroids. When I first opened the app, I almost got overwhelmed because there's just so many different things you can check out and do with your hard drive using this app. But the interface makes it extremely easy to figure things out. And if you're not an expert with computers or hard drives, don't worry. I explain everything we're going to do in simple, easy to understand terms. So anyways, let's go. Okay, now before I show you how to defragment, I just wanted to real quickly show you the interface for Drive Genius 3. It has this cool animated showroom uh, interface. You hit more for more features over here. And as you uh, hover over them with the mouse, you can see information on what each one does. Uh, down below. Now this animation is really cool. However, it was causing the different tests to fail because Drive Genius 3 was crashing. Um, and it said that it had something to do with the animation. Uh, so it told me to turn it off. So to turn off the animation, which is cool, but if you're if the tests are crashing, it doesn't do any good. So to turn it off, just go up to Drive Genius 3, Preferences, and then uncheck Enable Animated User Interface. Now, the first thing that we'll be doing is defragmentation. Your computer actually stores files in lots of small pieces all across the hard drive. So when you delete files, random spaces across the drive are now freed up. Now, defragmentation actually speeds up the hard drive by placing these unused sections of the drive in one location. So when your Mac reads over the drive to open up a file, it doesn't have to look through all those unused pieces of memory anymore. Now, to defrag, simply click on this icon right here defrag. Now on the left hand side, I'll show all the different volumes that are connected to your computer and that are in your computer. So I have my Macintosh hard drive and then a partitioned uh, volume, my boot camp, and then a drive that's partitioned into three volumes here. Now, this will show the whole volume fragmentation. The green is all the use space, the white spots there, that's the free space, and the red as it's filling in is the fragmented space and then the yellow is the reserve space. Now if you're looking to defragment your startup volume, which would be your Macintosh hard drive, the hard drive in your computer that you run everything from, you'll act uh, Drive Genius will actually have to restart your system into what they call a minimal environment in order to defragment the startup volume. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to be defragmenting a volume on my external drive over here. Now I actually just defragmented this volume so you can actually see what it looks like basically once it's defrag doesn't have all the little lines. You can see a few spots in here, but uh, looks very clean for the most part, but I'm going to defrag it again. So to defrag, all you do is Make sure you select the right volume, then you click start. Now this warning will come up and it'll come up before all the different tests and procedures that we'll be doing on the hard drive today. It just says that if something were to happen, there's an error that would occur with your computer or hard drive while it's in the middle of the operation, there is the potential that you could lose data. So be smart about it. Don't do these sorts of things during, let's say, a thunderstorm or sometime where you're likely to lose power. You could lose data. Um, under regular conditions, extremely unlikely that anything would happen. But if there's vital information you cannot lose, definitely make sure you back up the info before you do these different things. But again, not very likely. Now there's two options for defrag. Defrag without disk check and check disk and defrag. I'm gonna do check disk and defrag. So just check the disk, make sure everything's going good. And after you click that, defragmentation will begin. Now the defrag has completed successfully. So we can just click done. And this is what the volume looks like after the defrag. You can see the free space was moved to one contiguous block. So like I said, doesn't have to read and look over that free space when it goes to open up a file. There's still some fragmentation. Uh, the little bits right here were taken out. There's still this uh, fragmentation up here. You can actually see which file is fragmented and then you can go in and examine uh, the individual files more closely. So definitely great overall feature. Uh, definitely should do it on your hard drive if you've been having, uh, you should just do it in general and especially if you've been having uh, troubles opening files. 
Now, the second feature that we'll be checking out is Drive Slim. This allows you to search for large files, duplicated files, unused languages, universal binaries, and cache and temporary items that haven't been accessed recently. And you can customize all these options by clicking change options. So you can choose uh, what is a large file. So greater than eight megabytes all the way up to 100 megabytes. This should be a lot more, should be really, you should be able to go all the way up to 10 plus gigs. Uh, you can also change the time that it has been accessed and you can go through and customize all these different options. Once you're done, just click done. Then you can actually choose which ones you want to scan. So I'm just gonna look for duplicate files and unused languages. And then I'm gonna search for this on my Macintosh hard drive. Then you just click search. Okay, so the scan is completed. Over here on the left, you can see uh, separated the different types of files that we had to look for, duplicate files, and then the unused localizations. There's two different ways to actually view um, the files. I personally like it this way. You get a better breakdown of everything. Now, this is the duplicate files. If I were to check everything here, it would actually erase all the duplicate files. And you may say, well, how does it determine which one's a duplicate and which one's an original? It just goes with the most recent one. It says that's the original and then deletes all the other duplicate files um, and replaces them with aliases, which is basically just a link to that original file. So it's actually frees up a lot of space depending on how many duplicate files you have. I'm actually just going to be uh, erasing this file right here and it will replace this with an alias and then for the unused localizations these are actually just the language files that allow all these different applications to run in different languages but i don't know any of these languages here so i'm gonna delete them this is actually a great way to free up uh, a little bit of space on your computer and once you have selected everything that you want to slim your drive it'll show down here at the bottom one and a half gigs marked and then you just hit slim drive okay so after a few minutes it'll go through and populate this list right here this gives you a second chance to go through and maybe deselect any files that you don't want to delete if you were you just select it hit this red x right there you can also choose to archive files to a disk image so you'll have that disk image. Then you can use your computer for a week, month, however long, just to make sure you didn't delete anything vital and everything's still working fine. And then you can delete that disk image. So just a kind of extra precaution. But I'm not going to do that. Now, once your decisions are final, just click Slim Drive. Now, number three is repartitioning. Repartitioning allows you to create multiple virtual hard drives from one physical hard drive. For instance, when I turn on one of my hard drives, these three hard drives actually appear on my desktop. That's because I partitioned the drive into three volumes. This allows for better organization of files. Also, you can defrag just one partition instead of the entire drive. It's great if you're constantly deleting and adding files, you're able to defrag just that one section. Now the repartitioning section of Drive Genius 3 is extremely powerful, so powerful that I'll actually be creating a separate video just on that feature. So just click anywhere on the video right now and I'll take you to that repartitioning video when it's uploaded. Now before I get to number four, I just want to let you guys know if you ever do wonder how exactly to use a feature, just like this question mark down here at the bottom and it will take you to the help section. And this app has an excellent, excellent help section. Uh, some apps, this help section, I just feel overwhelmed with so much data um, and information, but not this one. It helped me out actually a lot while I was planning this video and uh, helped me actually explain some of the different concepts that I've been going over. And of course, showed me exactly how to use all the different features and tools of this app. So if you ever do have any questions, just go on over the help section. It explains in great lists uh, and step-by-step -step how to use each uh, feature. At number four, this is the scan feature. Now, data on a hard drive is stored in what are called blocks. A hard drive needs to be able to read and write to every block. Now, problems can occur when a block becomes unreadable. 
A surface scan requests what is called a read on every block in the drive in sequence and determines whether the drive reports an error on any of these requests. The scan, the scan verifies that each of these blocks or sections can be read correctly. And the extended scan is great if you have noticed a slowdown in your Mac or if you have just purchased a used Mac and you want to verify uh, that the hard drive is in good health. Number five is Shred. This is a fun and powerful feature which allows you to securely erase your files. Now, how is erasing your files fun, you may ask? Well, when you can erase that horrible term paper you had to do or that ugly picture of yourself at or above the standards of the US Department of Defense, it becomes kind of fun. On the left hand side of the screen, you can choose to shred an entire drive, an entire volume, or just a particular file or folder. This is what I'm going to be doing. And you can actually just drag in the particular file. So I'm going to shred this super secretive secrets file. Oh no, it's showing up right there. Then click select. Now you choose the strength of the shred here. And a pass is simply when the computer writes over that spot on the hard drive one time. So obviously seven passes, it writes over it seven times. This is the Department of Defense uh, security level. 35 pass is like insane if you really want to get rid of it. And I really want to get rid of this. And since it's such a small file, it won't take too long. So once you choose the file or folder, whatever you want to uh, shred, the strength, just click start. Then it'll give you this warning, obviously just letting you know you are about to destroy data. but. Yes, we know that we want to do it. So click shred. And bam, it is completely shredded. It wrote over it 35 times. So a great, powerful and pretty fun feature. Now the sixth and final feature is drive pulse. If you're saying those are cool features, but I just don't have the time to constantly be messing around with optimizing my hard drive. Well, that's why Drive Genius 3 has Drive Pulse. It lives up in the status bar of your Mac, and from it, you can easily access lots of information. Drive Pulse will automatically check for physical problems, volume, consistency, and it will defrag your drives on a regular basis. And as you can see, you can check out lots of information from all the different drives connected to your computer. It will also alert you if there's any problems, and you can check out uh, the different uh, notifications that will give you about a problem in the events and so you can easily go to that problem and then delete the file and hopefully uh, avoid any further trouble. So it's basically just kind of like the cherry on top to Drive Genius 3. In short, Drive Genius 3 has a ton of valuable features. I didn't even get to all of them in this video, but definitely check it out if you want to maintain and manage your Mac hard drive well. And I mean, who doesn't? Drive Genius 3, it's $99 made by ProSoft Engineering. I have a link down below, I'll take you to their website. Also, if you do purchase it, they have pre and post sales technical support via phone and email. So if you're not an expert on hard drives, they will be able to assist you. Also, like I said, the help section is really just phenomenal. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope it helped you out. Hope you learned a lot. If you do have any more questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments section. Also give this video a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate that. And subscribe for more Mac tutorials in the future. I have a lot planned out. If I can just find the time to make them, uh, I'll be getting them out to you guys. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Later.